Welcome to the Great Basin by our potential briefing for Sunday, July 28th. Over the next few days, we will continue to have impacts from wind and low relative humidity across the Great Basin. Today, winds will still remain gusty over southern areas of the Great Basin, although not quite as strong as the winds yesterday, with still single digit to low teen RH. And then we will have some breezy winds up north in Idaho with relative humidity between 12 and 17% although wind gusts up north will be closer to 30 miles per hour and probably a little bit over 30 miles per hour down south. Still a few isolated thunderstorms left today in Wyoming, but for the most part, the activity is moving east out of the area today and tomorrow. On Monday, we will still have breezy winds and dry conditions over southern areas up in Idaho and then picking up along the Sierra front as well. And by Tuesday, we still might have some winds over southern and western areas of the Great Basin, but still breezy up north and then a return of potential lightning over parts of Idaho, which could be a mix of wet and dry. Over the last 24 hours, we had quite a bit of lightning activity over northeast Nevada into northern Utah, and eastern Idaho into Wyoming. And looking at the precipitation, and many areas in these areas of blue saw precipitation over a quarter or even over a half inch of rainfall. Here is the Great Basin fire activity map from yesterday. You can still see plenty of fire activity and large fires across the Great Basin. Over the last seven to 14 days, we've seen generally precipitation over central areas of the Great Basin. And in some areas, this has been above normal for the time of year over the last two weeks, but otherwise drier around the periphery. The ERC point map was updated two days ago. It did not update yesterday, but still showing some critical conditions in the north, western, and far east side of the Great Basin with a little bit of a reduction in fire danger over central areas. Currently, our ERCs have dropped with recent moisture, but have been on the rise with some drier weather. And you can see up north in Idaho, we will see ERCs returning potentially to the 90th percentile by the end of the seven day period. And even over Southern areas, we are seeing those ERCs really increase. Our satellite image from today shows a general trough of low pressure along the Western areas of the US. This will continue, and this is what is providing us our breezy winds over the next few days. We will start to see the ridge build in later in the week towards the weekend, but for the current time for the next few days, we will continue with that trough in place with some cooler temperatures and breezy conditions along with low relative humidity. So with that, we do have high risk for those gusty winds and low humidity today again over southern areas and also up north into Idaho. And then relative humidity, mainly single digits down south and more teens or above 20% in northern areas. And you can see from the wind picture, wind gusts around 30 miles per hour, maybe a hair above that in southern areas, and between 20 and 30 miles per hour up north. Temperatures today will be near normal uh, with temperatures in the mid 80s to low 90s, or even a hair below normal, and around 105 in the far south. Thunderstorm potential, you can st still see some of those isolated cells in western Wyoming, but otherwise drier in most areas. On Monday, same picture continues with that southwest wind flow with the trough and still some high risk for winds in the north and over southern areas. Relative humidity will remain in the single digits over much of Nevada and Utah and in the teens up north. You can see for the wind gusts, we'll actually see an increase of winds from what we'll see today over central and eastern Idaho and similar winds over southern areas, but you can see those winds starting to pick up along the Sierra front. Temperatures remain about the same. Thunderstorm potential really dwindles. We could see a couple of cells skirting Idaho bordering Montana and Wyoming, but otherwise dry conditions. And on Tuesday, we will see that trough start to push eastward and weaken a bit. Um, so we do have no, we don't have any high risk for wind, but we will see a return of lightning over central Idaho. So a high risk for those for being a mix of wet and dry. So we will still have to watch the wind potential because again, we're still seeing some gusty winds in the north and south, along with those very dry conditions down south. So we'll have to pay attention to Tuesday to see if we need any other high risk for gusty winds and low humidity. Otherwise, temperatures remain about the same, cool off a little bit in the north as that moisture moves in with the trough. And you can see the precipitation potential. So again, a mix of wet and dry across Idaho. Three-day precipitation amounts, you can see the heavier amounts of precipitation north of the Great Basin, but still skirting Idaho with that lightning potential. As we move into Wednesday, this is when we'll really start to see the ridge start to build north. So we will see warming temperatures, but also a drop in winds. So we lose our gusty wind potential on Wednesday, uh, but still keep the dryness in place. Uh, we'll have to watch that southeast corner of Utah. Could see a few cells move its way in for some lightning potential. Otherwise, no high risk in dry conditions. 
similar conditions on Thursday and then by Friday and Saturday is where we start to see that moisture push north for a return of lightning for at least the southern half of the Great Basin. Seven-day total precipitation, you can see that moisture returning for these spotty type showers and thunderstorms. And the 8 to 14 day outlook does show above normal precipitation for the Great Basin as we go into the middle of August. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. Um, we do have some tropical activity brewing over the Eastern Pacific. So we'll see if that plays a role. Um, but for now, really just looking at drier conditions with any lightning uh, being spotty precipitation. That concludes our webcast for today. Check back tomorrow for the latest updates.